I want to jump right in with the stakes and what they are and why Democrats are doing this now, Senator. Well, they're very anxious, uh, Harris, to transform the country immediately, <clears throat> even though the American people sent a 50-50 Senate and a narrowly divided House. I don't think they were sending a message that there was a mandate to completely transform uh, the country in every way liberals uh, want to do that. And so they view the Senate rule, which has been there forever, that requires a super, super majority of 60 to do most of the things we do as an unnecessary inconvenience. Now, bear in mind, this is the same Dick Durbin who two years ago was defending this as absolutely the essence of the Senate. So right. I guess where they stand uh, depends on where they sit. And so when they <clears throat> are in a position to advance the ball, they don't care. In contrast, uh, President Trump tried to get me uh, to orchestrate the elimination of the filibuster for a number of years, even tweeted about it. I said, no, Mr. President, that's not in the best interest of the institution and actually not in your best interest either. I said no. Said no. Um, they're, they're prepared to steamroll the Senate into a majoritarian body, just like the House, because it inconveniently so, gets in the way of all they want to do to run up the debt, to raise taxes, and you've seen the disaster at the border. Uh, so look, you mentioned it yourself that you were asked to do this by former president. Here are Democrats on the filibuster back when Trump was president. What about that nuclear option doing away with the filibuster? Well, I can tell you that would be the end of the Senate as it was originally uh, devised and created going back to our founding fathers. The point is we still left the 60 votes in place right. for the Supreme Court. you bring Court, it back? And yeah. Mitch McConnell changed that. I would prefer to bring it back. Without the 60 vote threshold for legislation, the Senate becomes a majoritarian institution like the House, much more subject to the winds of short-term electoral change. No senator would like to see this happen. End of the Senate, you've called it scorched earth. What is all of that about? How bad is it about to get if this happens? Well, Schumer had it right two years ago. That's what he thought then. Uh, but he's yielding to the pressure of the hard left uh, to turn the Senate into uh, a, a, a speedway as opposed to a place where things are paused and thought over. Mm. The Senate was created on purpose, Harris, not not. To, to function like the House, to slow things down, to kill bad ideas, to force bipartisanship, all the things that the Democrats believed in, as long as there was a Republican in the White House, are conveniently thrown aside as soon as they think there's a chance uh, that they can advance their steamroller uh, agenda, uh, which the American people, by the way, certainly d did not give them a mandate to pursue in last November's election. Senator, scorched earth, what is that to you? Well, I think what I predicted, our reaction to them fundamentally turning the Senate into the House would be to make it difficult for the Senate to function. Uh, for example, in a 50-50 Senate, it'll still be hard for them to achieve things. It takes 51 to make a quorum. Uh, without 51 votes, you can't do business. Almost every day, most of the things we do, Harris, are by consent. You hear a senator say, and I ask unanimous consent, that we do this, that, or the other. Any one senator can object to a consent request. My, my point being that the fact that they get rid of the filibuster doesn't mean the Senate will work better. It means the Senate will work worse. And it's a step in the wrong direction for the institution, for the country. I hope. Uh, Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema, who have similar views to mine, will stand strong, protect the institution. It'll be in the best interest of both parties in the long run.